first thing that I want to see, and we'll, we'll provide some context on this as well, is his hip rotation. Okay. So when we look at like the timing of hip rotation, and I, and I hate to get like too analytical within all these concepts, um, but when we look at the timing of hip rotation, we're looking at some point in which the, in his center of his drive phase. Okay. So, uh, in the center of his drive, phase, the drive phase is the, t- the phase in which he descends from peak leg lift. Boom. Now he's entering his drive phase and it's this phase in which he, from this point on to when he anchors down into the ground. So when I say anchor point, that's going to be f- just front foot strike with that lead foot. All right. So when we look at the timing of hip rotation, right? When is hip rotation initiated? I look at kind of the center uh, or the midway point of his drive phase. Um, so we can then initiate our hip rotation somewhat early, which will then we'll dive into like the whole conversation of segmentation when we talk about the lower body rotation, upper body neutral. Uh, you see like the trunk and torso alignment neutral. And then that's how you create authentic hip and shoulder separation, okay? So what what I see Robert doing here is he's not initiating hip rotation um, at the timing of which it should be to create that separation. You see as he anchors down, you know, his back foot's still connected. Let's go to this video to showcase this. And again, 12U, I'm not expecting perfection here, but we can just start feeding into these movements and trying to get that efficiency that we want. So you can see it here again, um, coming down. Why is it skipping like that? So when does that front knee? So I'm going off this. Okay. So front foot contacted with the ground. All right. Anchor point. And what we see is, is a obviously like late hip rotation. It's a breakdown of hip rotation mechanics. I got a lot of stuff on that. I'll show you. I'll include that in the report. Um, but what you also have is if we look at like the throwing shoulder, okay, so the shoulder here and then the rear hip, okay, you see that there's not really any disassociation, any segmentation, right? No separation there. So now what we fall victim of is a couple different things that, that could happen with what I see Robert potentially falling victim of is now the, the lower body and the upper body move together which then essentially forces the arm to make up for lost energy, right? I don't want to dive too much into like the the deep dives of this stuff, of what happens, but going off of what you said in the report with his shoulder sometimes getting sore and long toss, usually with long toss, you have more acceleration and acceleration turns into force. So you have more forces moving throughout your body. And if we're not creating segmentation, if we're not creating that separation, then the arm is going to be taking on majority of that load and that stress, especially with the shoulder. So Robert has a lot of external rotation um, of his shoulder capacity, which is a great thing. He's going to end up throwing pretty hard, you know, once he gets older. But what I see right now is the shoulder and the arm is having to take on a lot of that, that stress because of we, we don't have that ability to create that authentic separation, right? Separation counts for about 80% of our velocity. Um, so if we're not having the body, uh, take a lot of that, that load and a lot of that stress, then it falls victim or it falls onto the arm. Right. So basically to sum that up is we want to create separation to utilize and maximize our leverage of the arm with the body's energy. I have a very good video here of DeGrom upper half, and you can just see the amount of separation he creates through his segmentation, right? So you see the lower body there already into rotation. So then boom, you anchor down, look at the amount of stretch, right? That rotational energy turns into torque. Um, and then you release torque and you release that rotational energy upon anchor point. Um, so then the arm gets pulled through by that rotational energy and it doesn't have to then, you know, exceed maximum, maximum energy on its own independently is what I would say. So here's another video, DeGrom from the front, the amount, I mean, Look, like <laughs> this is obviously the goal of what movement we're shooting for, but it's Jacob DeGrom. He's the best pitcher of the last 20 plus years. He moves exceptionally well, but just to give you this visual, right, of the amount of stretch and segmentation, you can see that the hip rotation, the hip rotation mechanics, are, hips are into rotation um, and the trunk remains neutral, right? And you can see the amount of separation he creates. So, you know, 
guys that can do it at a high power output that can do it for a long duration of time are guys that, you know, have the ability to leverage their arm and uh, to take as much stress off the arm as as possible. So right, dudes, thank you for watching that video. If you're interested in booking your own analysis, be sure to click that link. Also, I'll be doing a lot of giveaways here in the upcoming months on my YouTube channel, but you need to be subscribed in order to be entered in those giveaways. All right, so you're gonna click that link right there to subscribe to provide some more context on the specific thing that we were just talking about. I included a video right down below. All right, guys, story day. God bless. Until next time.